Next question came from Dewan. He said, Lamar getting all the blame. I decided not to look at the sports talk shows until Super Bowl week because I think it's garbage and clickbait that most analysts are putting all the blame on Lamar for the AFC Championship loss. Yeah, he didn't play perfect, but we lost identity. We were only down by 10 points and the defense was playing lights out. Harbaugh and Monkey went into full panic mode. I think the bigger problem was the offensive play calling. The run was pretty much non-existent. The panic mode was on full display. The biggest game in Lamar's life and adjustment should have been made at halftime. We have the number one rushing offense in the league and you telling me you couldn't make adjustments at halftime to establish the run? Either the coaching staff was playing scared or I don't know what's going on. I see why people keep saying that the game was fixed because everything was set up perfect for us to be in the Super Bowl and offensive coaching staff wasted the AFC Championship game to give the worst game plan of the year for the entire NFL. I think Harbaugh is a great coach, but I just wait. I'm waiting to hear another excuse for him wetting the bed on the big stage again, shaking my head. Hey, you couldn't have said this any better. Like you hit the nail on the head. In so many different ways Like I, I ain't even got no follow up to it Because you done said everything Next question came from my guy Reginald He said Hey Engraven Why did the refs allow Travis Kelsey to taunt all game long Then call taunting on flowers Refs weren't consistent all game long You can't call taunting when Travis Kelsey is talking trash all game Our O-line needs to be reevaluated. That's some more Ravens O-line on the ground all game long Morgan Moses got beat on the plate And he just let the guy go right past him He didn't try to grab him or trip him or anything He just watched him On that play Morgan Moses should have just grabbed the dude And take the offensive holding penalty You don't want to give the D-line a free shot at your quarterback Mr. Morgan Moses at one point, I saw one of our guards get tossed around like a rag doll. KC was more physically up front than us. We couldn't block anyone. We didn't run the ball enough at all. You go three and out on your opening drive, you can't do that against a good team. I believe that playing Andrews might have caused a glitch in our offensive chemistry. Likely as a matchup nightmare, he didn't get enough touches. Uh, why was Kelsey so wide open all the time in the first half? I was like, did they even scout the Chiefs? This dude was wide open in the first half. People upset about Taylor Swift. Well, don't be. It's not her fault the NFL is making their money off her being there. She isn't asking them to do that. If you don't like it, then ask your team to do better and beat KC. Then if the Ravens show up and beat them, then you wouldn't have to see her face anymore. Oof, that sounded personal, baby. Next question came from my guy, Jeremy. He said, hey, Graven, not sure if you do questions from subs anymore, but I said, yeah, we still do it. Without that playoff loss, I have to get this off my chest. I know many other Ravens fans feel the same way I do. How much longer will the Ravens keep this hardball circus in town? It's the same old story every season. Very successful regular seasons and absolute collapse in the playoffs. The fact that the same mistakes that were made in the 2019 game against the Titans were repeated in 2023 against the Chiefs is a massive problem. I thought we were past all of that when we moved on from Rowan, but now I am realizing that it's been the captain of the ship that has been the issue all along. The fact that 2019 and 2023 we had the best records in football and number one season and went out pretty much the same way both years is a huge indictment on Harv's. In my opinion, this team has shown that Harv's will not be able to get them over the hump. It was clear that it was Ray Lewis' motivation that got this, 2020, this 2012 team over the hump and not Harv's. It will be impossible for me to get excited about next season if they retain him because we already know how that story goes. What do you think? I would love to hear your opinion on this. Thank you and congrats on all your success. Appreciate you, Jeremy. Um, Yeah, it's... It's hard being confident about the Baltimore Ravens. That's what we said earlier. It's, it's very hard. It's very hard because everything you said, we, we've seen the same thing happen over and over. And it's like, all right, if you see the same thing happen over and over, if somebody shows you who they are, then you feel like you know them. You feel like you know what's going to happen. You feel like you know what's on the way. You feel like you know what's going to come. So, yeah, I, I would hope that we would all be proven wrong next year. But we said that this year. We've said that previous years and it's been the same stuff. Is it possible? Next question came from my guy Rodell. He said, my guy, here we go again, but disappointing ending to the movie. But with that, I don't feel like it was a bad movie. What I mean is I personally can't say this season was a failure. I, I disagree. I disagree. The regular season was great. It was amazing. Ravens, they made a lot of advancements and progressions. Amazing. They even won the playoff game too, but it's a failure. Because, like somebody mentioned, a lot of quarterbacks, they were going through some ups and downs this year. There were a lot of people that were hurt. There were a lot of people that were out um, for, with a lot of teams. And I mean, you can say that every year. But Ravens, like, this was a big chance. And, and their team was so stacked and just great. And they blew it. So they failed. Like, for Ravens right now, the way that they are, it is Super Bowl or bust every year. It's Super Bowl or bust. But this year was certainly the way that they, the depth, it was Super Bowl or bust. They bust. They they failed in my opinion. It wasn't a failure of the like the regular season wasn't a failure because I mean to, but to get to get to where you want to be you got to do good in the regular season. But they failed. They came up way short and they like and it's the way that they failed that makes it even more of a failure in my opinion because they did they they, they didn't even go out swinging. So anyway, he said. Uh, 
I personally can't say this season was a failure. I say that because going into the season, I judged us off of making this game. I didn't care if we went 17-0 or 10-7. We had to make this game. We haven't gotten past the divisional round since Lamar's been here. We absolutely had a terrific, terrific regular season, but I couldn't let that change my outlook. Should we have been in a big dance? Absolutely. But we also reached another level that Lamar hasn't reached before, which brings me to my next point. Okay. Here we go. And that's a good point. This was Lamar Jackson's first AFC championship. This was the Ravens' first AFC championship while he's been the quarterback. Anyway, he said, is it even possible? Is it possible to beat the Chiefs? Is the NFL pushing this next Tom Brady thing and backing the Chiefs and the refs? <laughs> is Patrick Mahomes just light years better than everyone else? Was the Bengals betting them, beating them and advancing just an anomaly? Like, obviously, this was the absolute worst offensive team we've seen Patrick Mahomes and Andy have, and they beat the arguably, arguably the best offensive team in Miami, beat the hottest team on the road in Buffalo, and then beat the best team in the NFL on the road. Lamar is now 1-4 against Mahomes, and not only was this Lamar's best offense, it was his best defense. Everyone argued that Mahomes wouldn't come close when the Cheetah left, and now he's moving on to potentially win his third. Oh, his second is second since uh, since Tyreek Hill left. You're right. We also cried for Lamar to get more weapons, and with the most weapons he ever had, the story had the same ending. Again, I ask, is it possible? That's a really, really good question. It is possible. Um... It's just a matter of getting it done, really. Uh, it's a matter of um, playing your game. Um, it's a matter of just finishing the job. And Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens, they obviously did not do that this year. There'll be more opportunities, but how are you going to be when those opportunities present themselves? I guess we'll see in the future. Next question came from Purple Bird. Hey, he said, Angry when I flew into the game from Los Angeles to watch the Ravens run the backs get six carries. Uh, very disappointed. I was sitting next to a Chiefs fan, and he was very confused on why we weren't running the ball. He was telling me that our run game was what he was afraid of. It makes zero sense to me. No way a head coach let this happen twice in a playoff game, have the number one rushing offense in the NFL. Let's remember, Hawes was on a hot seat before Lamar, and Lamar's success saved his job. I've been so tired of the special teams coach. Best case scenario for me, give me Mike Vrabel and King Henry. And King Henry. Wow. I couldn't even, couldn't even read that. My <laughs> throat got caught up. Anyway, he said, give me Mike Vrabel and King Henry. I bet you we run the ball when it matters the most with that duo. I'd also want Mike to stay, but I know I'm dreaming. But please get Hobbs out. Well, we saw how all that turned out. Next question came from Jarvo. He said, do you think we need to talk to Steve Smith he, uh, about who to draft the wide receiver? Because his scouting intake be key when he breaks down these receiver prospects. Uh, I mean, they could. They could. I mean, they got it right with Zay Flowers. He was nice. He did his thing. Um... So, yeah, and with Rashad Bateman, I think it's been more so an opportunity thing with him and, and the connection and the injuries, too. Um, but I think they got it right with Rashad Bateman, too. It's just it hasn't worked out, though. Um, so, anyway, he said, last question is, are you uh, on the Henry, Barkley, and Jacob trainer? Do you agree with me and just bringing back Gus to draft the stud at running back to join Gus, Hill, and Mitchell? I wouldn't mind Henry or Josh Jacobs. Saquon Barkley is nice, but he always hurt. Um, but we're going to talk about that more in another video because I got some important stuff to say about that. Next question came from my guy Marcus. He said, this is an ugly trend. Engraven, I'm still not over the loss. It's hard to get over the way that we lost. I rewatched the highlights at least eight times. But anyway, I'm curious about your thoughts on this trend that the Ravens have with not utilizing proven offensive veterans such as Dez Bryant, Le'Veon Bell, Deshaun Jackson, OBJ, and Dalvin Cook, to name a few. Well, you um, that's an interesting set of names right there because you got to look at the context with these names because they are big names, but you got to look at when they were Baltimore Ravens. When the Ravens got Dez Bryant, he was not the same Dez Bryant. He still had a little bit of left in the tank. He still had some left, but yeah, you're right. They they did not utilize him like that, and he voiced his frustrations. He knew that this offense was not it for Lamar Jackson. Uh, well, Le'Veon Bell, he was like next to being done with uh, when he joined the Baltimore Ravens. He just. It was not his time. With Deshaun Jackson, he still had some speed, but he was just tired. He, he was tired, in my opinion. He was older. He was not the same Deshaun Jackson. He gave a couple plays now, but then he come out because he would just be dog tired. Uh, with Odell Beckham Jr., always hurt. He, he was not healthy at all this year. He was not healthy. Uh, he would never be healthy this year, and we knew that, and he was not healthy. He would make some plays, but be out the majority of the game. And Dalvin Cook... <laughs> He was fresh. And Raven said, no, nah, no thanks. Next question came from my guy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good, bro? It's your boy, Flirt Nowinski. You already know what's coming. Hope all is well with you and yours. I know it was a tough one. I just want to say I called it. You can't beat the refs, man. Great game by Lamar, but the no call on the PI in the end zone. Then literally two plays later, they got the ball back. He gets tackled in a way, but way before the ball gets there and on Odell does, and no PI is called. It was evident. No lie, it was evident when it was offsides and they called unnecessary roughness. Never in my life have I ever seen that. Not in my previous, not even in my previous life, this guy. But as we talk about 
on here a lot uh, of the years. You have to knock the snot out of them to overcome the refs. But I believed in you, bro, and you didn't fail me. McDonald has turned it around. Now the cover two shell did allow them to bend all game, almost 300 yards in check downs, but they didn't break. He's been growing on me. You've been telling me for a while. Uh, but isn't it ironic? We had Giro that loved running in shot plays. And Munkin was supposed to be our savior, but he has the best rushing offense in the NFL and ran it like six times. And his only success was shot plays i'll leave it at that but yeah bro i think we are good definitely need to draft two of the best tackles in the world in world history and buy one and draft one and deal with the dead money what do you think offensive line is a big priority it really is uh but strategy is even is even a bigger priority in my opinion game plan is an even bigger priority game plan when it means the most game plans in the biggest situations is an even bigger priority in my opinion i said it before i go no shot at pat but they uh they they honor him and praise him for throwing checkdowns all game. It's spectacular. In the same breath, Lamar isn't ready. He has to grow as a passer. Do they not watch these games? LOL. It is what it is. He said, I put 1,600 on Zay scoring two touchdowns before the game. It was plus 2,300. You do the math. My heart was broken. I shed a real tear, man. Uh, he was just trying to make a play. It happens. Oh, oh, you put a lot of money. Oh, when he fumbled that second touchdown. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, a simple solution to that? Don't bet. Hey, look at that. Look at that. You see, you wouldn't have had your heart broken as much if you ain't put all that money on it. Or if you ain't put no money on it. You see, I, look at that. I done solved your problem. Anyway, uh, he said, um, and just like I was when they called unnecessary roughness on the offsides, I'm out. No, literally, I left the stadium. Mm. I get it. I, and I, I, I heard some other people left the stadium, too. Um, so they just, they just knew that it was not going good for the Baltimore Ravens. And me, I... I, I I wouldn't leave the stadium, especially coming all the way from Florida to watch Ravens play. I wouldn't leave the stadium, but um, however people decide they they want to handle it is is how they want to handle it, and so I, I can't be mad at that. Um, and the Ravens like they for that was a deflating game, man. It really was. It's a deflating game, and it's it can be deflating to think about what the future holds now. 